If I go to Starbucks to get a coffee, it usually goes something like this. Hi, what would you like? I'll have a coffee. What size is that? I'll take a small. You'd like a tall? No, I want a small. A tall is a small. Okay, I guess I'll have a tall. How big is it? And then they show me how big it is. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll have that one. If I go to a restaurant and I go to get wine, it usually goes something like this. I'll have some wine. What size would you like? Six ounce or nine ounce? I'll take the nine ounce, please. I know exactly what I'm getting. So when you pick a mountain bike and you're sizing it up, don't go by small, medium, large, wide, narrow. Go by the numbers. So let's take a look and do a quick run through some of the numbers you can use to zero in on a bike that fits you perfectly. All of these suggestions are made for the Weekend Warrior Gravity Riders. We pedal up so we can enjoy the down. Also, don't go to Starbucks. Local coffee shops are way cooler. Once you've picked a bike that fits your riding style, your terrain, your budget, something to one-up your buddies, whatever criteria you're using to pick your bike, you're gonna have to decide on what size to get. The first thing you wanna do is multiply your height in centimeters by 2.55. That'll give you the reach you should be looking for. Now some of you will get lucky and that'll plant you right in the middle of one of the sizing. Others will end up right between two sizes, let's say between medium and large. But that's okay, because we're gonna use the rider area distance or the rad to figure out which one of those two to actually go for. To calculate your rad, with your bike shoes on and pencil in hand, stand next to a wall with your feet pedal width apart. Put your arms bar width apart, stand nice and tall, roll your shoulders back, and then mark the wall. From there, measure from the ground up to that mark. That is your rad number. To measure the rad of your prospective new bike, take the stock setup and measure from the center of the crank up to the intersection of where your hands are on the bars. This is the rider area distance of the bike and that number should be as close as possible as the number you got when you measured from the floor up to your knuckles on the wall. Ideally, you're, you're gonna be able to set things up in the cockpit to get that number as close as possible to match. Any more than 20, 30 millimeters too long and the bike is probably getting a bit too big for you. Next, we'll turn our attention to the cockpit, and the first step is to determine the width of your bars. The first step is to measure your arm span. For most people, that'll be the same as your height, but some of you will have slightly longer or shorter arms compared to your bodies. Once you have your arm span in centimeters, multiply that by 4.2 and 4.4 to get the range of your min and max widths. I'm a touch over 5'7", and my arm span comes to 171 centimeters. My safe bar width falls between 718 and 752 millimeters. If you have an arm span of six feet, your safe bar widths fall between 768 and 805 millimeters. The best place to start is your max width. If you cut your bars there, your hands will naturally fall to a comfortable position in that safe range. In general, when working within your bar width range, the wider end will give you a little bit more added stability on the trail and the lower end will tend to be a little bit easier on your shoulders and upper back. Once you've figured out your bar width, the next step is to find your back sweep. Bars come with various degrees of angled back sweep from seven, eight, nine, 10 degrees, 12 degrees, all the way up to 16 degrees. One of those angles will naturally fit the ergonomics of your wrists, elbows, and shoulders. And finding the one that matches your body will make a big difference to your comfort level on the trails. To measure your back sweep, tie two pencils together with a piece of string, the same width as your bars. With your shoulders relaxed, stick your arms out in front of you about the same distance as you would grabbing your bars. At that point, have a friend mark the two ends of the pencils against a square edge. From there, you can use a protractor or an app on your phone to calculate the angle of your hands. Pick a bar that has a back sweep that most closely matches that angle. Once you've figured out the width and back sweep of your bars, the next decision is to pick your rise. Typically for gravity riding, you want a high front end. If you look at downhill bikes, you can really see this trend. Most bars come with a rise anywhere between zero and 45 millimeters. Typically for gravity riding, you're gonna to wanna to choose something 30 millimeters or higher. You can play around a little bit with this to help zero in on your rad that we discussed earlier. Now that you've picked your bar, it's time to choose how many spacers to put underneath it on the steer tube. Adding spacers does two things. First off, it increases the height of the front end of your bike, and that's a good thing on the downs. The second thing is it decreases your reach while increasing your rad. 
So you can use the number of spacers to zero in on the rad number to match your body to your bike's frame. Okay, we're almost done with the cockpit. We've picked our bars and the number of spacers. Now all we need to do is pick our stem. You're typically gonna to wanna to get a stem between 30 and 50 millimeters long, but it all depends on your bars. It depends on the back sweep. It depends on when it starts to angle back, the width. It even depends a bit on your head tube angle. What you're gonna to wanna to do is get a stem that places your hands 20 to 30 millimeters ahead of your steer tube axis. This will give you a good combination of steering, handling, and stability. Okay, we've got our frame, we've got our cockpit all set up. Now let's talk about cranks. Most mountain bikes come stock with 170 millimeter cranks, but that doesn't mean that everyone should be riding 170 millimeter cranks. You might find it hard to find anything below 165, but they are out there. And if you can find them and you need them, you should get them. For those of us that just wanna get up so you can enjoy the down, you're not at all worried about cadence and power. And studies have shown that the difference between 175s and 160s are almost negligible on that anyway. So really what you're thinking about is minimizing pedal strikes and having a comfortable stance for the ride down. The first step is to measure inseam. With your bike shoes on, stick a book between your legs and measure from the floor up to the top of the book. If you're riding downhill in a bike park, you can take that number in millimeters and multiply it by 0.19 to get your minimum size crank and 0.195 to get your max length. For more traditional gravity riding where you do a bit of pedaling to get to the top, you can get your minimum crank length by multiplying by 0.2 and your max by 0.205. My inseam with my shoes on measures at about 31 inches. That comes to 787 millimeters. So for downhill, that puts me on cranks between 150 and 153 millimeters. And for enduro and trail riding, between 157 and 161. I pedal up, but I'm most interested in the downhills. So I've chosen something in the middle and I've gone with 155 millimeter cranks. If you're six feet tall, you might have an inseam measuring closer to 838 millimeters. That would put you on downhill cranks at between 159 and 163 millimeters and cranks for enduro and trail riding between 167 and 171. If I was that size, I'd probably pick something around 160 or 165. Okay, two more things. For the dropper, get the longest one you can so that when it comes all the way down and your bike's in full compression, your seat doesn't buzz the back tire. For brakes, go big. I would go 200s front and rear if you can. If you're a bigger person, 230s up in the front. Nobody's ever said they had too much brake. 